This video is to help us understand how to write two-step inequalities. And before we get into that, we're going to address the question, is it any different than writing an equation? So let's take a look at what's involved with writing an the equation, then we'll take a look at it from the point of view of an inequality. We know that when we're writing an equation, we're going to have two things. We're going to have what is constant and what is changing. We know that that's going to be involved on one side of the equation, and then how does it end on the other? With an equation, we always have an equal sign. So let's talk about what is constant. We know that the constant is going to be a number, and we know that this constant over here is going to be how it ends. So we can almost say that this constant over here is what's happening at the beginning. Okay, so these are two numbers, but we know that this is the beginning, this is the end. So we can kind of know where those numbers lie. Now what is changing is our variable. And we're going to maintain that this variable, what is changing, it's going to be the object of what we're trying to find. There's always going to be a number that's associated with that as well. So we need to be on the lookout what's changing and adding that number there. Now, all of these things are still the same with inequalities. The difference is we're going to put in an inequality sign. We may put in less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. These are the four inequality signs that we need to concern ourselves with when we read the story. So let's practice reading several stories and just writing the inequality. We are not going to solve them. We're just going to write inequalities. Here's our first story. Elle has $40 to spend at the Kern County Fair. Admission is $6 and each ride costs $3. What inequality can be written to find the greatest number of rides she can go on? So first thing we have to look at is, do we, do we know how it ends? Sure we do. We know how it ends because that's her total money, isn't it? This is that she has $40. So we know that it's going to end with $40. Now, do you notice that I kind of started over here? It doesn't necessarily matter where we start in our story as long as we get all the parts in there. So let's look at this, what is constant? Well. What's constant is going to be fair admission, and we can see by the story that it says the admission is $6. So we're going to record that $6 here. And then what is changing? Well, what's changing is that each ride costs $3. So we don't know how many rides she's going on, so that's what's going to be changing. So we're going to say that X is going to represent the rides that she goes on, and we know that each ride costs $3. Now. We're going to add these together because these are expenses, and we know that she doesn't want to spend, um, this is how much she has to spend. So what sign will we use? Well, we're going to use the less than or equal to sign. And the reason we're going to use the less than or equal to sign is that she can spend less than that, but she, or she can spend equal to that, right? Because she can get it up to $40, but she can't go over $40. So let's clean this up how this would look. So 6 plus 3x is less than or equal to 40. You can also write it as 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 40. The commutative property allows us to switch those around. But if we stay in this order, we're probably always going to be writing this way unless we're doing a subtraction, then that's going to take an account there. Let's look at another problem. Three friends earn more than $200 washing cars. They paid their parents $28 for supplies and divided the rest of the money equally. What inequality can be written to find the possible amount each friend earned? Well, let's talk about what's constant. Well, what's constant is the amount of money they paid for their supplies. We know by the story here that they spent $28 for their supplies, so we're going to write down here the $28. Now, what's changing? Well, what's changing is how much each friend earns. So we know that there are three friends, because our story tells us up here that there are three friends, and we want to know the possible amount of, that each friend earns. So we're going to put that down here below. X is going to represent how much each friend earned. And then it's going to be, excuse me, just the number three here. Okay. So let me erase that. Okay. All right, next. How does it end? Well, it ends with the money that they've earned. And when we look at this, we can see that there's $200 here. So we're going to record that $200 right there. Okay. And so we know that when we're looking at the sign, they earned 
more than, look again, here goes, three farms earned more than $200. So we're gonna put that in here, that, that more than sign. So that's gonna be this here. So let's clean this up a little bit without dollar signs and the like. So this could be 28 plus 3x is greater than 200. And that tells this story. Let's practice a few more times. Trevor is writing a paper that must be at least 50,000 words long. He has already written 23,210 words. What inequality can be written to find the average number of words Trevor must write per week if he wants to finish the paper in the next five weeks? So what is constant? Well, what's constant is the words he's already written. And he's already written 23,210 words. So we're going to write that down here. 23,210. Okay. We know how it ends, don't we? How does it end? It's his goal amount. How many words does he want to write in the end? Well, he wants to write 50,000 words. So that's where that 50,000 is going to go, is right here. And remember, we could start in any place. We don't have to necessarily go in order. We can take these numbers and determine what happens. Now, it says he wants to finish the paper in five weeks. So we need to determine, though, the number of words. We're trying to figure out what's the number of words. That's going to be what's changing. How many words is he going to write? And I wrote day here. I should have written week, so I apologize for that. So each week. So we know that, that that's going to be five weeks and X numbers of words per week. Now, we want him to get there, right? So it's got to be greater than or equal to. He's got to equal to is going to be the least thing that can happen, right? It's got to equal 50,000. He can write more than 50,000, but he can't write less than 50,000. So we're going to add these two things together. So let's clean it up a little so it looks a little neater. 23,210 plus 5x is greater than or equal to 50,000. Okay? All right, let's do one more of these. A mountain climbing team is camped at an altitude of 18,460 feet on Mount Everest. The team wants to reach the 29,029 foot summit within six days. What inequality can be written to find the average number of feet per day the team must climb to accomplish its objective? All right. So let's start taking, let's go by these numbers. We'll go in order. So they're camped at an altitude of 18,460 feet. That's pretty much our beginning, right? So that's our starting altitude. Where did we start at? So they started at 18,460. Let's look at this second number, 29,029 foot summit. They want to reach that. So that's really how it ends, isn't it? Their target altitude. So we want to get to 29,000. 29 feet. Okay. Now what's changing? We got to look for what's changing. We know that they want to get there in six days and it's a number of feet per day. So what we're going to do then is talk about what's changing. Is there altitude change per day? So we're going to use X as the feet per day. We know that there are six days. We're going to add those together. And then here, the sign that we want to do, again, it's going to be greater than or equal to because we want to get there. We can be larger than that, but we can't be less than that. So I think, I don't know if I need to really rewrite this one. I think it looks pretty clear here. So this is our inequality. Now let's take a look at one problem going backwards. What if we were given an inequality and we needed to write a story? So let's take a look at this inequality. 150 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 20. So we're going to have to decide what is going on here. So I'm going to put myself in this story, and I'm going to talk about this 150. What, what is it? What could it possibly be? Well, it could be that I have $150. Money is probably the easiest way to explain stories. So let's say I have $150 and I want to end up with $20. I want to have at least $20 left over. So that kind of explains our two numbers. Now, what could I be spending it on? Because we see this minus sign, that means I'm subtracting it from this $150. So I'm spending some money and I'm spending money on four things. So maybe what's, how much money can I spend on a gift? So maybe I have four gifts to buy. 
So I want to buy four identical gifts for my four student tutors. So this tells a story of this inequality. So we can look at inequalities and be able to understand um, if how to write these inequalities so that we're able to solve them better. I hope that you find this video helpful.